Meeting to order for the Board of Trustees of the Town of Vienna Vista. Can I have a roll call, please? Mayor Lacey? Here. Trustee Eckstein? Here. Trustee Bay? Here. Trustee Nyberg? Trustee Ebro? Here. Trustee Swisher? Here. Trustee Bowlby? Here. Will you all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will remind everybody in the room to please silence your cell phone if you have one. First is the agenda adoption. Are there any questions, comments, or changes to the agenda? Uh, yes. Mayor, on page seven, Lillian, if I could ask uh, the reason for Eckstein voting against motion number five. That would be, let's, we'll hold that for consent agenda. Oh, that's under consent, excuse me. Okay, thank you. Any changes or additions to agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Thank you. I'll second that. Second, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Now, consent agenda. Amy, you had a question? Um, if I could, for um, under page seven, motion number five, the reason I voted against it was that I wanted more discussion or more discussion was needed. Page seven. You. Any other questions or comments on consent agenda? Move to approve the consent agenda as amended. I'll motion. second that. Second thing. I just did want to point out the clerk's report. Pretty hefty. Good job. Pretty hefty. The new licenses? Everything. A lot going on in town again. Oh, again, I say again, <laughs> it hasn't slowed down at all. Just have, and of course, Paula's out. Lillian's just killing it. I am certainly trying. <laughs> did I, let me see, we had a motion second. Did I, yep. did I we did? We, yeah, so time for a vote. Vote, yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, I went with further discussion, thank you. Yes. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we have public comment. And I know, Philip, we had two signed up. Do we have more? Uh, we we do have two that we've we've captured. We have uh, Jim Hyde from the Trails uh, Trails Advisory Board, and then we have a group from Odyssey of the Mind. Those are the two we've had. So you might prompt anyone else that's out there to. As, as before, anyone who would like to speak a comment, uh, public comment, um, if you're on your phone, you can press star nine and the meeting host will prompt you to unmute when it is your turn to speak, or you can chime in the Zoom chat box if you are logged in that way. So while we are watching for that, I'm gonna have, uh, Jim, would you go ahead and like to start off? You have uh, three minutes, please, and give us your, uh, name and address and your information. Okay, thanks, uh, Mayor Lacey. I'm co-presenting with Gina Lucrezzi from the, also with the Trails Advisory Board, and she's going to start. Hi, everybody. I'm Gina. Um, I'm at one 160 uh, Barnwood Circle over here. Um, but trustees, Mayor Lacey, town staff, I'm pleased to speak on behalf of the Trails Advisory Board. I'd first like to speak about the BV trails in general. Um, we are seeing an increased usage and in earlier in the year than years past. Um, the pandemic has indirectly uh, created a movement for outdoor recreation um, and BV is great, it, the perfect spot for it. We see more people coming from the front range and also out of state combined with our locals. Um, with that said, we are excited for the interest and activity and aim to do more to accommodate the trail traffic as well, as well as maintain <clears throat> what makes these trails so special and unique. 
there are two trails that we'd like to highlight that we're proud of and excited for the launching. Um, so the two that we've been focusing on lately are Tater Tots, which is located down in the disc golf area, um, which will be focused on a place for kids learning to mountain bike and, and just getting their, their feet in the dirt. And the other one that we're um, coming to close on, uh, pending some additional funding, will be the Walton Loop. Um, and this encloses uh, the loop around the baseball fields and then also the social uh, trail reclam reclamation areas. And Jim, I'll toss it back to you. Thanks, Gina. Yeah, Jim Height, 180 Barnwood Circle, Gina's neighbor. And uh, just one of the things we're doing, as you probably read in the paper, we're expanding the adopt, adopt the trail program for years. It has been just one, one volunteer monitoring a trail segment, but that's, we need more, more eyes on the trail. So we've opened that up and Earl has, has received a number of, of um, volunteer requests from people who want to participate in that. And as a relatively new member of this um, committee, I'm just super impressed by the longevity and the history. We have members that go back um, about 15 years, including Lois Walton, for whom the, the Walton Loop is being named. And we also have new people like Gina, who, if you don't know, by the way, she runs a national organization called Trail Sisters. And myself and Nancy Fox, who co-owner of BVE Bikes, so there's just a lot of enthusiasm and energy now tempered with the gravitas of, of history and, and deep expertise. So I wanna thank the trustees for your support and we look forward to working with you to improve and expand our trail network. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. That was nice. Next is Odyssey of the Mind. Hi, we're the Buena Vista High School Odyssey of the Mind team at PO Box 2027 in Buena Vista. I'm McKenna St. John. I'm Susie Chup. I'm Peyton Kreitz. I'm Ella Coates. I'm Lila Phillips. I'm Aspen Strains. And I'm Audrey McFadden. And I'm the coach, Carrie Cleaver. Um, the simplest way to explain Odyssey would probably be it's a problem solving activity where each team is given a problem and we have to um, solve it by creating a skit and creating the, all the sets and the costumes and props um, to solve the problem and then follow the given requirements. Um, so this is a, we made it into a national competition where we will be going to Orlando, Florida to compete against um, many different other teams. And this is a really great opportunity for us. Not only do we get to represent our town, but we also get to represent our school and all the hard work we've put into it. And we want to go and um, show that we can compete with these people. And I wanted to talk about a little bit of who we are. So we are straight A students. We do sports and we do clubs and we volunteer. And really, we apply ourselves to everything we do. And one of the things we really, really love is Odyssey of the Mind. And we are dedicated to what we do. And that's why we're here, is we really want to go to Worlds. And to do that, we are asking you guys for money. So far, we have raised $1,000, and we believe that we could raise about 1000 more, but to go, we need around $7,000, and we are hoping to get some of that from you guys today, and it, we would really appreciate getting the amazing opportunity to go to Florida and do what we love to do. So a little bit about what we've done is we are so dedicated to this. We have applied over 200 plus hours to this club doing what we do. And we have done string art from hot gluing string on boards taller than us. We have made beads out of baking soda and applied them to strings. We have used all materials from string, beads, baking soda, fabric, clay, yarn, anything you could think of. We are creative and we are dedicated to what we do. So we're here asking for your support of Odyssey of the Mind, and we would highly appreciate anything that you could do for us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, trustees, would you like to comment now? Would you like to comment more, discuss more in trustee staff? Thoughts? 
common procedure is wait till trustee staff. So trustee that's staff. my preference, but I have no problem with anybody wants to do it now. Anybody has any other comment? Trustee staff? Sound good? Thank you all very much. We're going to discuss this further uh, later this, this evening in trustee staff interaction, and we will be in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Did we have anybody else show up that you see, Philip? Uh, not seeing anything on the chat. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay. So we will close this portion of the meeting to public comment. And first item on the agenda, business item is the item A, fire patrol proposal and funding request. Chafee County Fire along with Chafee Common Ground will share the plan to patrol and help mitigate fire dangers as a result of dispersed camping during 2021, a funding match will be presented to the board. Estimated time. Who's presenting this one? So we have uh, Chief Robert Bertram and we have Cindy Williams on on the oh. meeting. Good Hi, evening, everybody. all. <laughs> so I, I guess I could do a little intro if that's okay. If you would want me to. <laughs> sure. So uh, we've we've been discussing as a board uh, the concerns of, of recreation impacts uh, around the town limits, and uh, we had a we had a, actually a discussion last board meeting uh, talking about some of the efforts that uh, uh, envision uh, and the rec and balance groups are, are have been working and partnering with the Forest Service and BLM to get some rec rangers out. Uh, out and about to help with education and engaging the public that are camping and recreating in our areas. Um, and we had the privilege of, of connecting with uh, Chief Bertram and Cindy Williams last week on an opportunity to uh, put some resources out there that would be focused on dispersed uh, campsites and related uh, fires, uh, campfires, and um, that's, that's obviously a, a pretty big concern in our area, given the um, proximity to town, proximity to our water supply, and, and just how many people were having camping in these areas. So a, a pretty exciting opportunity to uh, put together some funding, and, and I, will let, I will let the two of them uh, pitch the specifics, but staff is definitely interested in the timing of this, given that uh, we were already seeing quite a bit of activity in terms of, of campers in our area. Thanks for that introduction. That was fabulous. I'll, I'll maybe kick off and then pass to Robert to, to give you the details. Um, so I'm here, I'm, I'm the co-chair of Envision Chafee County. Um, we're working right now with the Chafee Rec Council, which is a team of 21 leaders, including Earl. Um, representing all the agencies and towns and local government and community. Um, we're working on a five-year rec plan to, to uh, manage recreation in a way that maintains healthy natural resources and our awesome rec experiences and the economic benefits of recreation. And one of the things we've heard all the way through that planning process from the community is anxiety about dispersed camping in the county we estimate there's about 5,000 um, motorized dispersed campsites in the county. A lot of those, you know, relatively in and around town and some of them in pretty fi high fire risk areas that have been identified as part, of, as part of the community wildfire plan. So one of the priorities and the strategies we've been working through with the Rec Council is to find ways to add more enforcement, more presence, uh, more education out on the ground. And we, um, Chief Bertram came up with an awesome idea for that with this front country fire protection um, plan. He's gonna bring a grant request to Common Ground and those are due on Friday. And one of the things that Common Ground request is a 50% match from the rest of the community for uh, new programs like this. So we're here to ask for that. And I'll let um, Chief Bertram give you the kind of the details of the program, which we're, 
we're still kind of ironing out some of the wrinkles with the U.S. Forest Service and the BLM guys. It gets a little complex, I think, between all these jurisdictions, but I think we're, we're going to work through that. And uh, Robert can give you the details of the program. Over to you, Robert. All right. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, thank you, everybody, for taking the time tonight. Uh, really, what we're looking at with this, uh, it's more of a looking like at fire prevention role. Uh, we'd be out patrolling in these evening hours from about four o'clock till just before sunset on weekends, so typically Friday and Saturday evenings when we have the problems with the campfires, then moving into Sunday and holiday weekends, as well as having a, a patrol that we come through the day after most people um, move out of their campsites, so typically on Sundays on a regular weekend, Mondays on holiday weekends. And, and really it's focused around a couple different things. So it's around education. So we're not going out writing tickets, anything like that. We're teaching people about fire restrictions, how to figure out what they are, proper camp etiquette, making sure they know how to put out campfires, all that, um, as well as afterwards having a detection piece, being able to have some additional presence out in the woods so we don't have these unattended campfires that go unreported, undetected. So we'd be able to do that, go through the proper channels to report it to the Forest Service. Uh, but ultimately having a presence out, presence out in these areas. Many of you guys have seen, even, even from town up on the Midland grade, uh, feel like they have campfires up there all through town. So we want to have that presence out there. So, you know, it gives people a chance to ask questions. We can educate them and hopefully reduce the risk of, of having you know, catastrophic fire in the county. Uh, with, with this proposal, we've, uh, you know, it is a problem countywide. We do have a lot of, um, on the north end of the county, we do have a lot of watershed concerns and, and so forth. So we've done this as a joint venture is what we're trying to do is we're asking for support from the town of Buena Vista. With this, we've talked with the uh, county commissioners, and we have support from there, as well as some brief conversations with the town of Concha Springs, who may be contributing as well. Um, all the funding coming together for the 50% match would help us be able to get out there and have these patrols. In fact, as we ran the numbers on here, this talks about um, two patrols on the holiday weekends. We would actually have the amount to be able to run two separate patrols on the, on the weekends of the two people being able to go out and educate. Um, and these would typically either be, these patrols will be done in a pickup and our new UTV or um, possibly a brush truck. That way we've got a presence, people know who we are. And uh, you know, we'll hopefully help out with, with some of the concerns because that's definitely one of the biggest concerns we hear from everybody, you know, is, is the amount of people coming up to the forest to recreate and making sure they do it safely. With that, I don't know if anybody has any questions, concerns, or saying anything you'd like to add. Trustees, questions. So it sounds like Salida is not interested. They're not part of the program. Is that right? Chief, can you speak to the nature of the areas that are being addressed through this and why yes. Salida may not be contributing? Yeah, so one, one of the things is uh, Salida and South Arc. Um, you know, work together on there, the Methodist front, their main concern areas covered by Salida Fire Department uh, at this point in time. And they're a little bit of resistance um, with a program like this. Our main efforts that we're looking at is, you know, our, our problems, problem areas. We do uh, four mile uh, Midland grade. We do have up the uh, upper drainages or cottonwood drainage, Cock Creek drainage, Browns Creek, uh, those are some of the main areas on the south side of the county. A couple of areas that we'd address is around Maysville area up in County Road 240. Um, you know, mainly the place we're focusing, like I said, is typically the most uh, reports we get from the public are is the four mile uh, Midland area that we spend a lot of time in looking for campfires and so forth. So we wanna be proactive having crews out there. And then if we do get these reports, it's a lot easier to respond while we'll already having people in these vehicles, hopefully out in that area. Uh, just be able to, to check on things, make sure we don't have a problem. That answer yours. Yeah, yeah, I would certainly like to see us support the program. Okay. Um, what, how is this, is this connected with what Envision was talking to us about, Robert, or is this totally separate? So this is um, part of the Envision Chafee Rec in 
sorry, the Envision JV Rec plan, um, which which Earl is also a part of. It's one of thirty projects that are inside of that plan, and it's a I would say a high immediate priority for sort of funding now. What we'd like to do is come back to you all next month when that plan is finished. It should be in draft next month, and we'd like to bring it to you for comment at that time. And that'll have everything, but this is a, a piece that I think the team agrees is a really a, a shorter cycle piece where we'd like to get some boots out on the ground as we come up on the holiday weekend here in the start of the season pretty soon. Um, the rec rangers that you guys talked about is also part of that program. Um, we have funding in place. We don't, don't need to come and ask you guys for funding for rec rangers. That's gonna go to common ground and the agencies themselves have come up with a 50% match for that program. So okay. it's all, and yeah, it's all connected and orchestrated, if you will. <laughs> okay, and that answered my question. So it is two separate entities are going to be out there in that respect, or two separate groups of people is the best way to put it. Okay, right. so this one will not do ticketing or anything. This is more informational and educational. More, yeah, it, educational, informational, uh, detection. Um, all of that. We, we do not have the ability to take it, uh, you know, really asking for voluntary compliance. That's what we do most time when we're out there um, anyways, but that the educational piece is huge when, when people are up here. Um, most, most people we come across really don't realize what the restrictions are and they're very compliant over here. Great. No, that's, and that answers my question perfectly. I think it's a, Okay, uh, it's a good one-two okay. combination too. The rec rangers are going to be more focused on um, the rec rangers are going to be pretty focused on cleanup. They will have some capacity to write tickets, so they'll be doing education, but they're they're broader. I mean, they'll be talking to OHVs about speeding and you know who knows what kind of the whole spectrum of stuff. I think the fire patrol gives us a, a opportunity to focus really specifically on the on the anxiety about human caused wildfire. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, my question is, uh, I'm wondering about the, the relationship between um, what you guys are doing and um, the authorities out there, the BLM and Forest Service, the larger dialogue about dispersed camping. Um, are, are the two happening in conjunction? My concern or my, my pondering is whether um, this effort will lead to that conversation or stifle that conversation because somebody local is doing something about it. The dispersed camping is a huge issue out there. Um, and the two, the, you know, it, it, I just want to make sure that, that this is helping that conversation, not putting it off um, further, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that's a, that's a really astute question, actually. So the Jim Pitts, who's a slider risk district ranger and Calum Leonard, who's in charge of rec at the BLM are both part of the rec council. So it is all, all coordinated. Um, the BLM has actually kicked off a countywide camping management plan. Um, they have that up for public comment right now by the, you can comment on that by the 20th of May. And if, you, if anybody wants that, we can be happy to share that with you. So they're going forward. And the US Forest Service is expected to start that same process this summer so for those two agencies, that'll give them, that kind of starts their environmental assessment and NEPA process. That'll run about 12 months. And once they're through that, they'll be able to look at these dispersed camp site areas and make some broader decisions, you know, perhaps going to designated, putting in steel fire rings, that kind of stuff that are bigger, kind of longer term controls. So that's all happening in parallel, but it has a longer fuse than this does. They'll be working to develop the plan this summer, but they're not actually going to be pleased to take action this summer. And when I looked at the BLM one, it, it borders the, take... the, the BLM and Forest Service we'll boundary. Take... They, they need to happen together. You can't, it, 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 it didn't make a lot of sense when I looked at the BLM one because it, it just shifts, shifts the issue 50 yards out. It's not, it, 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 it's really, they need to happen simultaneous. And I, I, I just, Things yeah, we can. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. I, we completely agree. We um, first prize would be that all the agencies would do it simultaneously. Right. We weren't able to get to first prize because they're big federal agencies, and we're happy to get them moving. 
Um, but we did get to a really nice second prize, which is that they're, they're very coordinated together. Not only the US Forest Service and uh, BLM, but CPW and the state land board is also involved. And you guys know, like up in Chubb Park, there's some pretty good chunks of state land board land. So all four of those organizations are working in collaboration to do this countywide camping management plan. And they're connected to the community through the rec council. So folks like Earl and Diesel and Salida are also having a voice in helping craft that plan as it comes forward and the homeless coalition and all those kind of folks. Cindy, how are all of those entities going to uh, report, I guess is the way I want to say that, how will they re be reporting on their progress? Is that the, an individual voice or are um, they each going to separately? How is that going to work? These are awesome questions. Um, so as part of the <laughs> implementation plan for the Chafee Rec Plan, so we're going to bring you the Chafee Rec Plan next month. Um, we're looking to get it signed by, including by you all um, in June and the county commissioners, assuming you like it. And then what we'll do is Envision is actually going to do an annual report on the rec plan, like we did with the wildfire plan. So we'll be kind of an independent body that's tracking everybody's progress and reporting it transparently so that everybody can see it and understand what's going on and kind of what's moving and what's getting stuck. So they will, they, they'll be able to transfer the information from the state and the BLM. All of that will be in a report that we'll be able to see. Yeah, absolutely. That's the plan. Okay. All in one place okay. so that the community can access it. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, we'll, we'll get them to that. We've had pretty good luck on that with the wildfire plan. I mean, it's not quite as complex as this rec space, but I don't know if I think we shared with you all the annual wildfire report which we did at year one, which is it's just that. I mean, transparently tracking progress or lack of progress if, you know, if things need to be addressed. Any other questions, trustees, comments? Direction. Are you looking for a motion? Or I will take anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm debating between, somehow between 5,000 and 7,500. I don't know if either of you, any of the board, Felt strongly about an amount, or would you guys want to defer it to trustee staff to discuss it a little more? I have no feelings about an amount other than we have to support it. I think okay. that's a huge problem. I agree. I think it is too. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. I think I'd go for the seventy five hundred dollar amount. Would you put that in the motion? Uh, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, allocate seventy five hundred dollars to uh, the fire. Ranger project. I don't. I don't have a good name for it. But. Chafee Front Fire Patrol. Oh, Chafee Fire Patrol. Thank you, Devin. <laughs> We've got a motion on the table. I'll second that. Second row. Further discussion. I just have one comment or one yes. question. I, I just. I, I can find this out on my own, but I know that we're collecting through sales tax uh, some means of funding. Envision and, and, and all of these projects. So I'm not sure where the extra funding comes from. I, I, I still, I, I support it and I'm, I will vote in favor of it, but I think that, that I personally need to do some additional research into where these funds are going that, are, that we're spending every day in our tax dollars. Well, I read my mind. I was just gonna make a comment that in, in, the, in the report tonight in Michelle's report, you will see through the first two months that there's excess sales tax revenues collected so far this year. So the board could uh, utilize that to cover this and anything else, uh, the, but it is a budget uh, budget adjustment. So that would be, yeah, that would be. Yep. And, uh, when uh, Michelle does it quarterly, I believe. Okay. Any other comments? I, I would just say, I agree with that, that, you know, we, we are collecting a lot of sales tax I'm not sure how to account for that reality, but um, as long as it's there, I'm sure support a program like this. And I think um, going to Dave's question is the actual tax that's dedicated to envision. Envision. Um, so that, yeah, that, so I, I can I can speak to that a little bit if it if it please, helps. Please, please, Cindy. Um, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So the. That fund is also growing, um, the common ground fund it's called, which is the quarter of a percent countywide sales tax measure. Um, it dedicates roughly $100,000 a year to rec management. 
so when Robert um, brings a request um, with his match, I think he's going to bring a request for $20,000 to Common Ground, and that'll go through the grant cycle. We're in the middle of a grant cycle right now. Um, so I would expect that would be supported. It just, again, we ask that um, funds for staff come with 50% match from somebody. So we leverage those up. So um, that'll happen. And then we have a lot of, um, we have 1.2, we have, sorry, I'll back up. I think we have $700,000 available in this current grant cycle. Uh, we have seven, $1.7 million worth of requests with um, a lot of big fire mitigation force mitigation projects countywide, um, some ag projects. And then um, there's about 200,000 in the mix for recreation management projects too. So we'll be sorting through all those with the council in the next, once the applications are in at the end of next month and uh, getting those dollars out the door as well. I would say related to that, just so you guys know, I think last time we talked, we maybe came and asked you for $10,000 to support the railroad bridge project. Um, Common Ground is also supporting the railroad bridge project with I think in the range of 100,000. And because of that support, um, I don't know if you guys know, but we were successful in that big restore grant that we went for. Um, we went to, uh, that's a national Fish and Wildlife Federation and GOCO fund. We asked them for $540,000. And because we had so much community match, we got it. Um, which was fabulous. We were competitive for that. So that's going to put some treatment on the ground up north of Railroad Bridge that helps protect um, town of BB2. So anyway, thanks for that support. I mean, all this, I think we're doing good traction as a community by leveraging these dollars to bring in more, more dollars. And I think that helps answer your question where those funds are going and yeah. how they're being utilized. No, that's perfect. Uh, any other questions, trustees? Lillian, we'll have a roll call vote, please. Trustee Eckstein? Yes. Trustee Fay? Yes. Trustee Rowe? Yes. Trustee Fisher? Yes. Trustee Volpe? Yes. Very good. Um, very good. And thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Robert. Um, thank you, board. I think it's very important. Very important. Yeah, thank, thank you, you all. Thank you all much. for what you do. Thank you, everybody, for your support. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is the water court updates pending applications by Upper Arc. I will not read the number and Young Life. Uh, Attorney <laughs> Cindy Kovo will provide an update to the town's involvement with these applications and requests authorization to stipulate in both cases. Hi, Cindy. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for having me tonight. It's nice to see everybody. One of these days, it's going to be in person. Um, uh, several years ago, uh, the Upper Arkansas District filed two applications in the water court that we opposed on behalf of the town of Buena Vista. Uh, one was an application jointly with Young Life, who runs the Trail West Camp um, up on North Cottonwood Creek. And that was very close to home. So whenever other people are changing water rights, moving water rights around or doing different things in Cottonwood Creek particularly, the town pays close attention to make sure that whatever these folks want to do isn't going to adversely affect your own water rights. And that's kind of how the whole water court system works. You have to jump in to protect your rights or they don't get protected. Young Life um, had an on-site wastewater plant at their camp, but due to difficulties with that, they decided they needed to connect to the Buena Vista Sanitation District. And what that meant was that the treated wastewater return flows that came out of that on-site plant and went into the creek weren't there anymore. So they had to develop a plan to, to get that amount of water into the creek in order to um, operate their water rights the way their own water court decrees require. And so they worked out an arrangement with Upper Arc whereby Upper Arc basically provides their augmentation, but Young Life has changed a particular water right called the Silver Creek Ronk Ditch that would allow them to make the water replacements at the location they want to do. And essentially Upper Arc is gonna to get to use that water right as well to the extent that the Young Life doesn't need it. So this was a lot of moving things around right in the town's backyard. And your engineers at Wright Water did a lot of work to determine whether or not this could be done without injury to your own water rights. And after much investigation, 
and um, some really very productive negotiations with Young Life and Upper Arc, we reached agreement on a form of water court decree that they will agree to and that we believe adequately protects the town's water rights. So we're recommending that um, we stipulate to entry of that decree on behalf of the town. What that means is that all the provisions in the water court decree have been agreed to by Young Life. And so if they change it or if they have a trial or if anything else happens, they still have to end up with all of those protections in their water court decree. And so um, that would relieve the town from having to participate further in the case, except just to make sure that whatever they finally end up with really is consistent with what we've agreed to. So that was the close to home case. The other case was a case filed by Upper Arc to provide augmentation services really down in Custer, Fremont and El Paso counties a long ways away. But what Upper Arc likes to do is have a lot of flexibility with its water court um, augmentation plans and with the water rights it has. And so we were concerned that this plan might require it to move more water in and out of Cottonwood Lake, which is um, near and dear to the town's heart as well. So we, again, put a lot of time and energy into understanding how they were going to operate these water rights. And Adam Kremers at Wright Water Engineers spent a lot of time talking to um, staff and investigating their record keeping and reporting and measuring and accounting and concluded that um, in this case as well, the town's water rights would be adequately protected. So we are also recommending a stipulation in, in that case. And I am happy to go through the details of the water court decree. They're complicated and technical, but um, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to do that. Thank you, Cindy. Um, trustees, any questions? Um, um, the, the object uh, basically we're looking for is giving uh, Cindy the authorization to do stipulation in both of these cases. Any other questions that you clarifying? I mean, it sounds like background's all been done. Obviously, she reiterated several times how much time's been involved. I'm sorry, Cindy, but that just justifies your wage. That's all I can say. <laughs> you know how it goes, uh, what can I say? Um, we appreciate what you do, obviously. You've done a lot for the town in the past and we're gonna count on you in the future too. Um, so what do we need, Philip? Do you want a motion to, yes, thank you. Yes, please. So I would entertain a motion to authorize. Cobell, go ahead. Make a motion to authorize express gratitude. I guess that would be separate. I make a motion to authorize um, the, the, the stipulation. stipulation we're going. I'm not, I'm not sure how to phrase that properly. I think that probably covers it. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor. I will second. Oh, I think, I, I'm sorry, Cindy, Faye, Libby got you. Okay. <laughs> Further discussion? Let's do roll call vote, please. Trustee Eckstein? Yes. Trustee Kay? Yes. Trustee Rowe? Yes. Trustee Swisher? Yes. Trustee Holby? Yes. Thank you all very much. And thank you, Cindy. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. I, I think um, you all have a good team here. And it's been wonderful working with Joel and Philip on this and, and with the folks at Right Water. So I'm hopeful this is a, a good outcome in both of these cases. Thanks. Thank you. Don't go too far, Cindy. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the Triview property discussion. The board will discuss the potential annexation of the Triview property, water impacts, and recreation open space metering, excuse me, matter planning around the rodeo grounds. Do you want to lead this? Sure, I, I will. Uh, we have, uh, as you we just discussed with Cindy. So we've got Cindy, uh, Jeff, Joel, myself. Uh, Mark's also been part of discussions as as uh, Earl. So staff is prepared to engage in discussion, but this was really at the request of the board to continue the discussion 
from the work session at the last meeting um, uh, to further digest the, you know, kind of the implications, the potential um, other aspects to annexing that property that Triview currently owns. Uh, to set the stage, uh, since that discussion, uh, we've, in, we've engaged with them a bit. Um, they have essentially made it very clear, one, their top priority is they would like to move forward with annexation uh, soon. And the reason why they say that is that they really want to lock down the jurisdiction that they'll be working with um, as they proceed with their, uh, you know, their uh, process of, of moving the water off the property to the use that they purchased it for. Um, so they, they're, you know, we, we really want to pursue annexation. Uh, the other part that, that I captured or we captured from the board discussion was just kind of the, the, the master planning concept and the timing of that and being really prepared to properly do that from a staffing and a community perspective. And, and so we kind of posed, hey, how critical is the timing on that? You know, if, 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 if town was more comfortable, if that process kicked off in 2022, what do you think? And they essentially, you know, said that it really doesn't matter to them. They've made it very clear now that annexation is the top priority. If, if the town is, is interested in doing that, then the master planning would be, you know, they, they would imagine that that would be part of the whole deal and that, you know, town would pick the time for that process. So the, that's just two clarifications that we, um, that we got from them since, since the, the work session. I think for tonight, um, what I'll just leave you with and let you all discuss um, are there, there are certainly um, political uh, um, aspects to annexing this property quickly. Obviously, it's a, a, a pretty substantial size of uh, property, but it's also moving water off. And um, not that uh, town is endorsing that or not endorsing that, but public perception and information and all of that's going to be pretty important as they move forward with their plans. So kind of the, if town moves forward with a quick annexation, what burden does that place on you as a board and us as staff when it comes to communicating with people that are concerned about the water aspect to it? Um, and then uh, I know there were several questions about, hey, what, what, are the, what are some of the details of the water moving off? You know, is it going back to Codwell Creek? Is it going back to the river? And as you heard from the Triview team, they still don't have specific answers to a lot of that. So um, stuff they, they will have to figure out, but at this point they don't have um, very precise uh, details on that. But I know um, staff and board raised those questions at the, at the work session. So um, yeah, I think it's, it's kind of up to you how you wanna shape this process. Um, and staff's here to answer any questions that you might have, but I'll turn it back to you and you chew on it a little bit. Thank you, go ahead. Um, is it questions now? It's now, it's time for yes. questions yes. discussion. That's what we're doing. Um, so the county comp plan encourages communication between the town and the county during the annexation. So how would that work in this situation? Could we work with the county commissioners or Envision or Upper Arc Water it, will they be part of the impact hearing of the annexation or is it, is there a barrier with quasi-judicial nature of it? We can, in, I mean, I would imagine that uh, uh, any or and all of those agencies would be involved to some degree, whether it's at the request of the board or um, because they would be, um, a lot of times we have, in an annexation process, we have to, there's an evaluation of services and things like that, uh, where agencies that they're, uh, the jurisdictions that they currently are under have an opportunity to weigh in on those impacts. But I think on the, spe the specific ones you're listed, that you listed, I think it would be kind of at the request of the board. Like, hey, we want to engage these specific groups through a process. You know, I, I can also quickly address a little bit of that, Phil, but that helps. Yep. 
um, so just as a note, um, annexation is actually legislative in nature. And so um, the zoning of the property, which is following the annexation is quasi judicial. So generally with the annexation itself, you're not limited to having what's called ex parte contract contacts with other interested um, groups like the county or Envision or any other groups. So um, staff could work um, with them. Um, they could provide input uh, that could be considered by the board as part of the annexation. Ultimately, you'll have to prepare an impact report for the county um, if the county doesn't waive that requirement. And ultimately, the county will have an opportunity to participate in the final public hearing on annexation. So the board will hear from the county then um, as well. But you're not limited um, to taking input just from the county. But you certainly can, and you can, you can get input from other groups as well. So I hope that answers your question. And my thought on that is, I guess it would be more relevant if the property was developed. In other words, streets, housing, let's say whatever, that would really impact that communication with the county or on how it would affect services and things like that. It seems like that would be much higher impact than the fact that we're looking at bare ground. Yeah, that's, that's typically what's discussed as part of annexation, uh, impact reports and all that. But yeah, I'm, I, I'm sure the county has opinions on the impact of loss of water or other things too, so. Other questions? Just a comment that I just, I, there's a lot that I, I, I guess I, either I don't understand or I'm not seeing, but it feels like we're being asked to move quickly through a scenario with a lot of unknowns. I, I, I'm not sure what, and it, it just feels like we're moving quickly through something that I don't understand. Why we, why we, why we want to annex it, why we need to, I did I guess I have a lot of research to do outside of this, but it just again feels like we're we're being asked to do something that we're not even sure what they want to do with their part of it yet, or how it's going to impact the surrounding area. So I'm not sure I'm completely on board with this process. Um, so if the town does not cooperate or annex in, does the water get moved out just the same? Cindy, you want to touch on that? Yeah, I just wanted to make a couple of comments. One is, I'm not sure that just because they would like to move this along very fast means that you need to move it along very fast. Um, I think you could take a reasonable amount of time to evaluate it and assess it and think about what makes the most sense for the town. As far as the water side of it goes, they bought this property so they could stop irrigating it and take the water and um, float it down the river to Pueblo Reservoir and then eventually um, through various conveyances via Colorado Springs get it get it all the way up to Triview. They're way up by monuments so they're quite a long ways away and that's why they bought the land that's why they bought the water and that's what they're proposing to do and whether or not they're annexed that's what they're going to try to do. I think their hope is that with a cooperative arrangement with the town since the property's right by your rodeo grounds and there's a lot of um, synergistic um, energy between the two of you, it would make more sense for them to annex and then they could deal um, with your approval processes. And um, they're, they're concerned about the fact that the county is pretty much on record as not being happy with the idea of taking water out of the county. Um, I don't think that either the county or the town is going to be able to prevent that. But one of the questions is, are there any kind of terms and conditions you could put in a water court case or from their perspective, a 1041 permit that would be helpful to them? And I think what um, Triview would like is to have those be as manageable as possible. And to the extent there's some opportunities for give and take between the town and and try view, they're interested in that. Does that make sense? It does. I mean, essentially it boils down to the 1041. Really is they're wanting, they're wanting that to be as easy as possible without conflict. Now it's possible, yeah. I suppose. I suppose if we did not <clears throat> hurry the annexation, 
they could say, okay, then we really don't need to talk about giving you a master plan for the rodeo grounds. Or, I mean, you know, there's things that we're talking about trading here. I think key is what Cindy is saying. Either way, they're going to pull the water. Mm -hmm. No matter what we do, they're, they're going to try to pull it. Well, they're going to pull the water. Uh, essentially, I don't know is if there's any way. Do you foresee any way, Cindy, that we could stop it? I think it would be hard. It's possible that the town, the county might try to determine some way they could do it under their 1041 process, but I'm not aware, and maybe Jeff can speak to this better than I can, if there's a way, uh, any kind of city or town requirements that could be placed on this that would prevent that water from, from leaving. Yeah, I, mean, I guess I don't really want to say one way or the other in a public meeting. If you want some uh, confidential legal advice on that, we could discuss that in executive session. Um, so I, I don't want to commit either way, but we could certainly talk about that um, in confidence if you'd like to. Thank you, Jeff. We respect that. Sure. I, I think that's really the point um, at, at this point is they're wanting our help with the 1041, if you want to put it that way. That's really what they're looking for. And the only solid carrot they've given us is doing the master plan for the rodeo ground. Realistically. Right. Realistically. Everything else is in the air. And I think there's a lot of it that's unknown anyway. Right. Um, you know, they talk one way and then we're sitting here just in the conversation that we had with Cindy and everything is we're not sure that's possible. That water may have to go back down to the Arkansas rather than go to um, Cottonwood anyway. You know, I mean, just, just because of that. I think there's a lot of unknowns for them even at this point. I think the only thing they do know, the 1041. <laughs> That's the only thing they really do know. And, and they're looking for our support on that is really what they're looking for. Just so you can see it, I know there's more discussions. Cindy raised her hand too, so okay. I just, I just okay. want to forget what's on. Yeah. Yeah, um, before we would before I would want to vote, I would want the questions that we had asked them answered. And you, <clears throat> in our work session, there was something about after they do, if we went through with it, they did the rodeo master plan, um, we would be leasing the land from them. Is a, a long-term lease. I don't know if that long-term lease is 50 years, 100 years, 200 years, whatever, but would it be out of line to ask for them if we are going to spend money developing and utilizing their master plan that they give us, that they actually end up donating some of that land to the town, would that be out of line to ask for? Uh, no, I don't think it would be out of line. And, and uh, Cindy and, and Jeff have reminded the rest of staff that, um, you know, essentially if town is, is at all interested in proceeding in, in, in a certain pace that's appropriate, um, we essentially need to start formulating a, a list in essence of, of all the things that we are looking for out of this. So that would be kind of the absolutely, not, I, think, I think everything's on the table, I guess is the key message there. Yeah, I think we did mention the whole ownership issue at least in one meeting and maybe I'd mentioned it to their attorney and you know, they, they haven't said yes, but they haven't said no. So I think that we should look at what we're looking for and, and see what we can get that makes sense. So it sounds like from input, um, and I'll just go from what Cindy said, what we need to come up with is a list, a, a uh, request requirements for the annexation <laughs> agreement. Is basically what you're saying, Philip? More if, the board, if the board wants to go down that path, yeah. If we're ready to move that direction, then we need to put some, uh, no different than we've talked about in any other circumstance uh, with the housing we need to put some documents say, okay, yeah, we'll talk annexation, but here's what we, here's what we require for that annexation agreement. How 
long do you think, say like if we were to do a public engagement process, as well as list all the questions, ask the agencies for their reports, is that like, would you say that's one year for that to happen? Say annexation hearing, it's all working towards the annexation hearing, I suspect. So is it a year, would you think? Looking because we need like robust public engagement so people feel that they're collaborative part of the decision making. Yeah, uh, sorry, I don't. I don't have a really quick answer to that because, in the midst of everything else, we have commitments for. We would have to space it out, so it could stretch as far as a year. I think. Uh, um, yeah, if we want to, if we want to dig into getting engagement from the public engagement from the different partners that would be impacted by this, doing some thorough um, time looking at, uh, you know, what, what additional impacts are there to annexation? For instance, do we, uh, do we then take ownership of the rodeo road portion that extends south uh, towards that property? A, a lot of other things. I, I could see it, uh, I could see it going for, for several months, maybe nine months or so, something okay. like that. I wonder if, um, and want to hear what you guys think of this, if we were to, so Tribe is taken up, it's now, as Dave mentioned, it's like here in our, you know, we're being asked for stuff and it's, what if we were to table it for six months, we can all kind of think about it. And then starting in six months, we can begin the public engagement process, the questions, and maybe the questions can have, could, that will give, Try to use some time because they're like, we don't even know how we're going to do it. So I feel like they're going to probably have to work on that. And then we can start a public engagement process in the fall of some sort and then set an annexation date nine to 12 months after. And we can always move it, but that would at least give us six months right now. So this isn't keep coming back. It seems like it's kind of taken up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. well, what's the public, what would the public engagement be? When we want to ask Tribune now, like what we wanted, and then we would decide later if they said yes, if we're what we're going to do with that that land, right? Say it again. We were saying that you want to have uh, public input on what we would do with the land. Well, first we need to ask if they're going to give us the land before we could like involve people in what to do with the land that we don't have yet kind of thing that makes sense i think they want to loan us the land i think they want to lease us i think we can move forward with that they haven't said it outright have they no yeah so okay. i think that would be something that we would have to nail down before we wanted to i mean that's i think that's all in the um the process if you want to put it that way of the annexation is we there again i think we need to come up with a, a bullet point list of this is what we expect for annexation. Uh, what is the public hearing process, Jeff? Well, I mean, ultimately the process ends in a public hearing where the board makes a final decision on annexation. But leading up to that, there's a number of steps, including developing the annexation agreement, having a, an actual board finding on the petition. So I'll take a step back. They have to file a petition for annexation. Then you, get, then you review that as a board and you make findings that the petition meets the Annexation Act requirements. And then you schedule it for a public hearing 30 to 60 days after your um, petition determination. And then in that hearing, you basically finally approve the annexation. So I mean, once the process starts, it takes you know, um, 60, 90 days kind of, kind, of, kind of thing, although you can continue that on, on further if you need to. But the hearing is sort of the last step. And usually we coordinate that with the petitioner to make sure that everything we, everything's in order prior to um, going to the hearing. Um, so um, we don't need to basically be too concerned about having a hearing immediately because that's kind of the final step. Okay, thank you. Cindy's got her hand up. Go ahead. Uh, well, my question really is for Jeff, because I think what they have told us is what they would like the pre annexation agreement. So that I and I gather having seen some of those before that that that's the, the document in which they talk about kind of the big outline of the annexation that 
the staff is going to recommend to the to the town. Is that is that how it works? Well, you don't you don't have to do a pre-annexation agreement. Um, although you know sometimes you do that when you're not ready to get to like the full um, petition and annexation process. And so in my conversation, they, they mentioned the the concept of a pre-annexation agreement because they don't want to spend money, for example, on like a master plan and those kinds of things, if we're not gonna be moving to annexation immediately, they wanna know that they're gonna to to get to that point if they're gonna spend right. money. But um, it depends upon how we're timing things. So um, in my conversations with them um, offline, you know, they haven't said we have to have a pre-annexation agreement. We could just do an annexation agreement, but that would, be, that would sort of be presupposing that we'd be moving quickly. So you know, if we're gonna take some more time we probably would do a pre-annexation agreement. The town has to approve the pre-annexation agreement. The board has to be happy with it. But that kind of sets the general framework for how the annexation process would go and what would ultimately be in an annexation agreement. But the town's still not bound to approve the annexation. So I hope think that, that Triview is looking for as much certainty as they can get. And if if it looks unclear whether the town is supportive of the annexation concept, they'll probably start shifting gears and putting their attention on um, how do they get through the 1041 process with the county. And you know they read the newspapers like everybody else, and they read about the the Nestle um, 1041 renewal, and they're concerned, um, frankly. And I think that's part of why they they came to the town in, in the first place. Well, you know, ultimately, if I were them, I'd be doing the same thing. So it's, it's not like it's um, necessarily um, a bad idea on their part, and it's an opportunity for the town. And so it's really a matter of whether the town um, weighs the pros and cons and, and decides that it's something that will actually be a benefit to its citizens. And, um, you know, and you're luckily in a position where you can, can provide a benefit. But I think sort of underlying all this, um, this is maybe not really a hard legal issue, but it does seem like it would be um, in the town's interest to understand the county's position on this because the county and the town work together forever and they're gonna work together forever. And so it would be nice to know if the town is uh, proceeding in a way that maybe the county is gonna support or not support or be ambivalent about um, because that's going to be one of the factors you're going to want to think about when you decide if you want to do this and provide this benefit to them and get a benefit for the town. So, I agree with that because I think that um, I think we've been quite straightforward with them about the fact that the town and the county work pretty closely together. And um, when it comes to the water plans that they have and the water court application they're going to file, um, we want to think about how we in the county think about that and whether we're on the same page or on different pages. And you don't have to be on the same page, but I think it's good to know whether you are. Right. I mean, you don't, you don't have to do what the county wants you to do, but it's just good to know what they would like. So you can weigh that in your decision. Mm -hmm. And the, the I, I know they're trying to associate the 1041 with the annexation. Uh, they're assuming, well, they're hoping if we annex that we will not contest or fight the 1041. Is that, that's kind of what, if I remember right in the documents there. That's, that's not quite how it works. I, I, I guess I think that ultimately what they would be hoping to do by annexing would be to be under the town's jurisdiction and the county's 1041 regulations wouldn't even apply. Um, and so they're hoping to basically avoid having to go through a 1041 process, which can be quite onerous, um, depending upon how the county applies those regulations. And then they're hoping to basically avoid that by annexing to the town. And you know, and frankly, I don't want to. I don't want to, you know, try and understand their motivations. But that's certainly one of them. I mean, the other one may just be that, like, they have this asset that can be good for the town, and and why not create goodwill? <laughs> you know, so if if I'm them, I'm looking at this as a as probably a, a number of benefits. You know, creating goodwill, avoiding 1041 regulations for sure, um, and, and providing maybe an easier process for them, but also. Um, you know, not wasting an asset that can be a benefit to a community. So, 
you know, I don't know which one's more important or what they've all considered, but that's what I would be thinking if I were them. Well, I, I agree with you, Jeff, when I hear the conversations that I'm hearing, if I put myself in their shoes, I know what I want to do. Um, if, if it is me looking at that situation, if it was Buena Vista in their situation, what would we want? What would we be trying for? Well, we'd want to hurry it up. We'd want to keep it moving. We'd want to, you know, I, I couldn't see us operating any differently than they are. That's just the way I look at that. Amy? Uh, do you think staff, do you think it, it's, so the first step if we were to reach out to agencies such as uh, commissioners, um, I don't know if Envision or Upper Arc Valley, I don't know who the stakeholders would be. Uh, is it, do you have, would you have enough information to reach out to see now and at least just get the temperature reading on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So that could be maybe one if board felt like that would be, a, maybe that would be a good start because that might dictate the rest of the process. Position statement from the commissioners would be great. Okay. I don't know about the upper arc, but the commissioners for sure. Yeah, I mean, I it would be. I don't think the commissioners are going to go as far as to to issue a formal finding or or a recommendation or anything like that because it's not before them. And and just like you all would be very hesitant to make a a statement on something that the the town hasn't researched or is as. So I I think we can get we can gauge um their temperature on it and if they would be you know upset or you know th that level of of feedback but i don't i think they would be reluctant to make any like formal public statement one way or another because um yeah i mean it's it's water so that's a big deal if if um tribe didn't have to go through the 1021 <clears throat> procedures with the county would they have to Revegetate the property. Cindy, can you? Yeah, great question. Cindy, could you touch on that real quick? Uh, yeah, I I think that um, they're very likely to have a revegetation requirement in their water court case, but um, it's certainly something that sort of thing again that if you were going to annex this property, that you would want to address separate and independent from that because it's possible there could be some reason that they would put off the the water court case for a long time. And I don't know that you want to count on some somebody else imposing that requirement, but it is typically imposed in water court cases like this, where you're drying up a sizable parcel of land. Um, and you might want some different kind of reveg requirements. And that would be something you could talk about too. I mean, I guess my, my whole thought about this project is that if there's a way for the town to get some benefits it would like to have out of this annexation, it's well worth considering. Um, if, if there is no benefit to you, then maybe it's not worth considering. Uh, but, you know, Joel and, and Philip have talked to us about various benefits that are not just related to what happens in their 1041 or their water court case, but other community considerations that ought to be discussed. And I, I think it's well worth investigating those and determining what's, uh, what's a good idea for the town. Because in the, at the end of the day, the annexation has to make sense for you. Thank you, Sandy. Go ahead, Dave. That just brought up a whirlwind of thoughts. Um, I'd, I'd like to hear from like the rec board and maybe we could dream a little bit when you're talking about camping out there. I'm envisioning like a buy and dry. They're just going to move the water off, turn it into a dust bowl that already exists, like at the rodeo ground. What if we could retain enough water to irrigate a campground or make make something make something a space out there that that we can use rather than just have extra dry space? So maybe maybe have the rec board dream in the next month and bring us back a I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure where I'm going with that, but. So can we put a commercial well, like could, would they be willing to put a commercial well on that property? Well, those are some things we'd have to investigate, I think. Um, you know, in order to take that irrigation water and use it for their municipal purposes, they're gonna have to demonstrate that once they stop irrigating, the property dries up and that's so they can figure out how much water they have available to, to use for their own purposes. And if it turns out, like we ran into with the lease mud ditch, that there's a lot of there's a high water table and a lot of water coming in 
that's not from that irrigation right. It reduces the amount of water that the crops took up from the irrigation right and consequently the amount that's available. So they are gonna to have to demonstrate some dry up, but it's possible that if they're able to do that and after they've accomplished that, you could put some other water on, on there from a well or some other source and, and irrigate it again. And those are the kinds of things that are worth thinking about because if they're important to do, we'd need to address those in the context of both the water court case and your annexation agreement. And um, Dave Volpe, I think with you, with the rec board, I looked, I don't see the rodeo grounds. This isn't in their CIP, right? Other than like some, a ticket booth, but there's no like rodeo grounds master plan. So I agree with you. It's like, well, just because we're going to get a hundred thousand dollar plan that sits on the shelf or is like the rec board, like, yes, we're going to put all our effort into developing this hundred thousand dollar plan. So I'm with you on that. I'm just wondering, so here from the rec board of like, do you want to commit to this rodeo grounds, putting all your assets? Dream, dream it up. Let's I feel like, is that something that we need to ask Triview first before we put it to like the rec board for dreams? Like, like, or can we like ask a broad question to Triview be like, can we put a campground there or some trails or you guys have a limit to what we can and can't do there? Are you giving us this land? To like, well, and I think that comes town. into your annexation agreement. Because, right. You know, this is what we we plan on doing. Obviously, the master plan will will have input on the master plan. What do we foresee to see out there? Yeah. Possibly. Now, to ask, I know, I'm not saying it's premature to ask Rec at this point, but they'll be involved in that master planning process and saying, okay, here's what we want. If we're going to do a master plan we would like to see camping or we would like to see a well or we would like to, you know, that's the master plan. That's how you come up with the master plan. So it's don't rule anything out if you want to put it that way. To me, if I were to ask them, what do you want to see out there right now? I don't know if that could true, would, could work. So those, that, that dreaming and that master planning could happen during negotiation, I feel like there be I think we we need to. I think really we need to sit down. What do we want in the annexation? What are the things we expect? We're this is what we're going to ask for in the annexation. We're going to ask for what uh, hundred year lease. We're going to ask for you know you see what I'm saying. Yeah. It's kind of like Cindy was saying too. I mean what what I don't think we really have an idea because we can request a lot in an annexation agreement. And, and the other thing there again, the other thing I look at is they could leave us in the dust. Right. Um, they could just say, you know what? We don't need your annexation. You don't need our master plan. We're going to move the water and we're going to move forward without you guys. Um, I'm, I'm not, is it, and I think Cindy Cobell said this, is it a value to the town to annex that piece of property? And I think Philip and Joel have talked about that and saying, wow, there is a value to that piece of property to the town in a master plan for the rodeo grounds, putting that all together, <clears throat> whether it be camping or whether it be more recreation or what is it? And that's what that's where we're at realistically at this point is, is it a value to the town? Do we want to annex it? If you don't want the piece of property, then we don't need to discuss anything. <laughs> if we don't think there's a value of having that piece of property in the town. On, on the sinister side, what if um, there's a developer waiting in the wings who wants to, um, you know, make a Tucson type property out of it with uh, lots of houses and, and run, you know, pay for the water lines to run into it from and put a major stress on our water that uh, we don't have enough of already. Um, or if they if they can't get us to annex it, then then they're stuck with the two acre lots. So it would decrease the number of houses that they could put out there. But you know we don't really have that information, right? It could be somebody like that. Well, at, at the time of annexation, the board. Uh, would also look at the zoning of it as well. And so, so the board could definitely limit the potential through the zoning. And if it's open space, then 
that helps mitigate what could happen in the future. Of course, it could always be rezoned on down the road. But yeah, that, you know, they, they expressed early that they, they're very open to leaving it as open space because they, that was one of the first things we told them was between the town and the county, we don't want to see two acre parcels out there. Um, so I think they've said, okay, they're not even entertaining that, but if they have to go through the county zoning and all of that, yeah, there's nothing stopping them from pursuing that just because they say that they don't want to do it at this point. So yeah. Joel mentioned something in the chat too. Yeah, it says, Travis says that we can pretty much do whatever with the land, except for the things they need to do with water. Yeah. Um, would you maybe if we do a work session make it a, a q3 work session just to continue this conversation do you think that would be appropriate to do now i think we need to come up with thoughts i don't disagree maybe if let's if we want to continue this as a work session um i think we need to be thinking and then dead serious do you want that piece of property okay i think that's the big question you've got right now in, in well, front of you is people. Hey, if you don't want the property, we don't even need to talk about it anymore. Yeah, I think it. I think it was, guys, uh -huh. but keep in mind just what Phyllis just said. They could chop it into two acre lots. They could do whatever they wanted with it at that point in time. We have no say so. And that's always been our three mile agreement when it comes to the IGA with the county is, well, we have input into roads and infrastructure and stuff like that as to how things line up with what town has. That could be a, what I call a leapfrog subdivision. Mm -hmm. It could be anything they wanted out there. Mm -hmm. But if it's ours, we have control over it. Yeah, and I think, I think it'd be, the way I see it is, I'm kind of thinking of it like, what is town gonna look like, you know, 10 years down the line, 20 years, 40 years down the line, you know, if, we, if we're able to get this property and use it as open space and use it as parks, then that would be a huge benefit to that area of town once we keep expanding, expanding, expanding on our, you know, 10 year plan or 20 year plan. Um, that's the way I see it. And the input on that, our plan, our five year ago, 10 year plan has totally changed. Right. From what we were. You, when you consider the amount of houses we're having built now and stuff like that, it just that everything has changed. Our water plant, everything is expedited to where we thought, oh, this growth, we don't have to worry about that for 15 years, <laughs> not anymore. And I see Sunset Vista, you know, expanding and going around. But if we have that huge chunk of open space, that's awesome for, you know, hundreds of years. Wildlife refuge. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. We can there's there's animal campground. I know. I mean, and camp bird watching tower. I don't know. So you can get cash flow, you can get cash flow it. We'll look out so we can see our enemies. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you guys then want, do you think it maybe is reasonable to see for Philip to talk with the commissioners first just to make sure they're. Like well, I think we're in, a, in my opinion, I think we're in a process of asking a few questions. Do I say, <clears throat> I can't see the benefit of tabling? Okay. okay. I'm not sure what that would gain us in that respect. I think we, if tabling means we don't discuss it anymore, then Philip doesn't yeah, so put out the move forward. Okay. I think we would have to keep thoughts and questions in the board's mind. Okay. In other words, Philip, yes, let's reach out and contact. Let's contact the county. Just okay. keep them out. Okay. Keep them out. In the same respect, what do you as individuals and board members think we should ask for in an act of annexation? <laughs> Because there's things we can ask for. I think the board, if we get consensus on designated dispersed camping, that would be what I would want to see. That would be members. your thought. You know, that would be a thought that maybe the board agrees with or, you know, or not. And how do we explore the then the, like, what is the step then for us to. Or that would be a, a motion and a vote. If the board agrees to do it, um, I think that would come at a, a very near future date because I think there's things we need to nail down. If we're gonna tell them, we're ready to move forward with annexation. We have to have a list of what we want. Because you don't wanna say, let's move forward and then not know what you want. I think, I, think you, I think you need to be ready. 
I think they'd have to agree to either lease it to us long term at a bargain rate or give it to us. Sell it at a, uh, a low rate. If we're going to, because we have to get control of it. If, if we want it at all, I think we have to control it. Right. I do think the revegetation, I don't want the town to be responsible for. It mentioned somewhere maintenance of improvements. I don't want the town to be responsible for. And I think, like Cindy reiterated on that one, that in the, the dry up, they're going to they're going to be mandatory that they're going to have to do that. But we obviously want to make sure that's sure different. that's not on us. Like if they give us the property, they're giving us 500 acres of. So, Philip, do we want to have. And I'm sorry, I, I've, I've got staff here that are, got the pressure Hi, coming okay. from this side. I, it's like it's like the heat right here on the side of my face. So uh, can I ask that uh, Earl has a couple of thoughts that may, may be related to Rec? Yeah, just real quick. And I see Mark has had his hand up for a little bit as well. Um, just want to make the statement that, you know, the Rec side, we're really excited about this potential acquisition of property for several reasons. Um, again, open space, open views, lots of rec centric potential. Do we know what we would do there right now? No. So we'd just love to be at the table when those discussions occur. Um, and having a master plan that we've been trying to get going for years um, would be a huge asset, not only to shape this new plot of land, but also our existing rodeo grounds that's getting more and more pressure. So we're excited about it, but you know, we're, we're the fun factory part of the town. And I know there's a, <laughs> a lot of other considerations, but um, just want to be um, kept briefed. And, um, you know, Joel and Philip have been great with that. Just keep us at the table as the um, discussions continue. Thanks. Thanks, Earl. So that was the fun part. Hey, Mark, what do you have? <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yes. All right, I have the non-fun part. I need us to, to be able to able to evaluate what the impact of that annexation is on the town and the town's resources. So, for example, Rodeo Road is not dedicated across their property, but it's a functioning road in the county that the county currently maintains. So if we annex that property, we are going to probably need to have a conversation about dedicating a road for ro rodeo road right of way and what is the long-term impact of the town maintaining that road in the long term and if there are any other roads that are in town limits that the town public works department will then have to come to the board in 2085 or tw 2150 to deal with repaving a road that the, that board at that time is going to have to pay for. So part of that is what they're gonna to have to tell us, which is um, that we are gonna to have to prepare an annexation rep impact report for the county. And um, we are gonna need their help in uh, them identifying those impacts to what that means to not only the town services, but uh, other county services as well. So there's an annexation impact report that would have to go to the county board of commissioners that they will weigh in on. So that is one of the things that we as a staff are gonna to have to evaluate. And then that's just the annexation. When we get to the, the conversation about what the property is zoned, that zoning will come before the planning commission and the board as to what uses can be done. And they are gonna ask for some zone district and so we're going to have to evaluate what potentially could happen in the future under that zone district. So even in if we had it as open space and recreation district, there are some uses that the board may not want to have eligible on that property. So that would be something that we may need to consider as part of any annexation agreement. Okay. Thank you, Mark. And then Sean, you've got something? Yeah, I'll be real brief. You know, so that's that, that area, you know, for annexation in, in town water and being able to serve it, it's in that upper zone kind of hydraulic elevation grade area too. So looks like portion of it might be able to be served from the upper zone tanks, but I think, you know, elevation shots will will need to be 
perform to, to verify that. It's kind of outside of that scope of my maps. We have the rodeo grounds sitting in the upper zone. I don't know if all of that area, I think it kind of climbs uphill a little bit. Uh, but anyway, just a thought, just, just for the trustees to be aware that, yeah, a little legwork to determine if we can serve water with our existing infrastructure should probably be looked at as well. Thank you guys. Isn't there a well at the rodeo grounds? There is. What kind of well is it? Can do anything? Yeah, it's a it's a pretty limited well. It's not 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 a high production. Um, I believe it has a one inch meter and it has a limited uh, augmentation plan, or uh, we don't produce a lot of water with it. It's also um, transient, non community, so um, good for uh, horse tanks and things like that. Maybe good for a little bit of water irrigation, Earl. Maybe we could look at that. <laughs> and if I, I remember correctly, it was a million dollars. This was how many years ago to get water to the Greg Drive piece of property. It would be how much to get water to that? That's, that's a big one. Yeah, four times that. Because that's a long ways down the road. Why would we have to take this the road, rodeo road? That's a mark question. Yeah. So, so if that property is on both sides of Rodeo Road, it is okay. Okay. I did not know it was. I thought it was just on the. It is uh, just on one side. The part that they are talking about with us. Yeah. It's so just on one side. side. So we wouldn't have to take Rodeo Road. Ah. Uh, we would border it. I don't know. I think that's one of those county town discussion points. That would be a discussion point. Okay, so that's a food for thought discussion because we can access it from the rodeo grounds. Yes, through the, yeah, through the rodeo. Yeah, grounds. through the rodeo grounds. We wouldn't have to actually ask for a cut, let's say, to go in that way. Mm -hmm. So that's an, that's an option, but that's definitely food for thought. Yep. I appreciate that, Mark. Yeah, thank you. I mean, the other element is obviously things like police protection. So. It would be town police department responding to emergencies on that land or, or you know, anything that's in, in that area versus the county. So those are all the things that we have to evaluate with an annexation impact report. So back to the pre-annexation agreement, which is about eventually what we're going to try to get to if we decide to move forward. What needs to happen with this group then? To get there, like, do we have a work session with all the questions, all the thoughts, all the concerns? Isn't that the direction you think we need to go? This I point? think so. I think so. We could. Uh, it sounds like the board's comfortable with me and and my staff engaging the county. Mm -hmm. yep. No concerns with that. I don't hear. So we could go ahead and do that legwork. We we have had some some preliminary discussion with them, but I want to uh, follow that up. Um, and then, yeah, I think work sessions probably. A good, I think so too. Idea, iron out some of these thoughts and visions uh, with a little input coming back there. Um, I think we have to at this point. Mm -hmm. We have to. Okay. I don't. I'm not getting. I guess necessarily the feel right now to back off of the annexation. I just think I we need more information. Okay. I, I and, then, and got me okay. Tell me if I'm wrong, Gord. Do we want that piece of property? Do, do we want to waste any I more wanna, time or not? I want to control it. <laughs> so, so in that way, I think I want. Yeah. I think I want to annex it. Yeah, like I would annex it as long as it becomes ours, if whether it's through a long yeah. lease, like you said, like hundred year lease, or they give it to us. I agree. So I the okay. So Philip, I think that helps move forward. Yep, it does. If the board's not interested, why go anywhere? Yeah, okay. all right. That's my thought. Why? Why even talk? So the board sounds like yes. Hey, we. I think we, and especially hearing from staff, I think there's big potential for that property, mm -hmm. uh, and especially having it adjoining, being open space. I mean, come on, yeah. Yeah. come on. So uh, let's move forward, okay. and let's base our next off of when you get information. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. There's no sense to meet again if the county hasn't voiced anything or something like that, or at least given us a hint of what we might need to do. Great. Okay. And at the same time, trustees be kind of thinking about 
that evolution of what we think that property we would like to see in that master plan. So prepare that for our work sessions. Where work we session. all think. I think that would be great. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Yep. Right. Yep. I think that's where we want to be. How does it relate to the airport zone? I'm just thinking, you know, I do not think that is in the airport overlay, is it, Mark? It's going to be Drone Central over there, though. Yeah, there yeah. I think it's outside the... The Drone Airport is over there. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's outside of it. We'll double check that, though. It's, yeah. yeah. It's outside the, the town's portion, but it may still have some regulations regarding to the FAA. Gotcha. We, that would be something we'd want to know. All right. I like it. Thank you all. Great. Thank you. Next item. Thank you for the discussion. Cindy, Jeff, everybody. Thank you. Involved. Thank you. Next is item D, GOCO grant request for multi-generational river park project and proposal to move forward with pickleball, pickleball project. <laughs> I think this is uh, a rec guy again. <clears throat> yes. Thank you, Mayor and trustees. Um, this memo is on page 20 of your packet, I believe. Um, and we may still have Leonard Davis on the line that's uh, joining us from the Peak to Peak Pickleball Club. I just moved him to a panelist, so he's on there. Great. Great, great. So um, the goal of tonight is to bring you up to speed on our GOCO application process throughout the winter um, and request some shifting of some pre-budgeted funding that we already have in our 2021 approved town budget. So going back in time, uh, in the fall, we applied for a GOCO grant for resilient communities and multi-generational facility with a focus on um, a dedicated six pickleball court facility and trail improvements in and around the River Park area. Um, the town committed a $20,000 match to support that grant um, and we unfortunately were not awarded um, that grant ask. So then we came back in early winter and reapplied for another GOCO grant focusing on in-town trail improvements and trail development and we were also not awarded by GOCO um, that ask. So those had been presented to you the board throughout the last six months as awareness and what we were going for um, and, you know, just a little story from GOCO is uh, we met up with our advisor, um, who's a great person, explained to us that our grants are extremely strong. It's just an incredibly competitive environment right now for, for the GOCO funds. So we're going to keep trying. Um, but in essence, uh, the board approved $20,000 to be seed funding towards these grants and we haven't received them. So what do we do with the funding moving forward? Um, and that brings us to our dedicated pickleball um, facility that's still high on our priority list through the Rec Advisory Board. Um, the space has been um, determined to be best fit to be just to the north of the existing tennis courts. And I believe that uh, picture is also in your packet. You can see that. Um, but we are at a point now where we are ready to look at some of these projects in a different manner. Um, instead of going for the full kit and caboodle and trying to get a project funded with one big grant, we're realizing now that we might want to pick it apart into more bite-sized pieces um, so with the help of our Rec Advisory Board and the Peak to Peak Pickleball Club, we've come up with a phase-in approach um, to help build our facilities. Um, and that phase-in layout is on page 24. And I'm sure you guys have seen this before. It was in your packet prior to the meeting. Um, so... Our ask tonight is to see if we can take $10,000 that we've already have set aside in our, um, in our 2021 approved budget and put that towards phase one for pickleball construction. And phase one includes site preparation um, where we would clear the area of the trees and of the rocks um, and get it ready for concrete. 
Um, we have a great relationship right now, um, thanks to Peak to Peak and Leonard and some other great individuals that are willing to donate a lot of this work. Um, Steve Miles and Paul Moltz are two individuals that are, are being super generous. Um, we can get this first phase done for about $30,000 um, and we'll get us ready for for the future pour for the slab and then to finish the project in our next couple of phases. Um, so we would be asking the town to contribute $10,000 from um, the money we already have budgeted for grant applications. Simultaneously, we are asking the county um, for $10,000 to be injected into this phase one project and peak to peak is willing to come to the table with $10,000. Phase one would not exceed $30,000 in cost. It actually might be a little bit less. Um, so budget impact, um, no budget impact for the town because we already have set aside $20,000 towards pickleball and um, trail development in town. Um, and we're coming to the board tonight to see if there's a consensus to utilize 10,000 of the $20,000 we have set aside to fund this phase one um, site preparation for our pickleball facility. That's a lot of information in a short amount of time. Um, so Leonard can help Fill in the blanks. I'm sure I missed a few things, but also would love to answer questions from our board um, as it relates to our, our ask here. I don't have any questions that I'd be in support of it. Leonard, do you have some input for us? Well, I, I'd just like to say that how much the pickleball community uh, appreciates Earl and the rec advisor advisory board on this uh we're ready to turn some dirt and, <laughs> and get going on this uh and i think we with the generosity of uh, paul maltz and uh, uh steve miles uh this is a real opportunity to do this for much less than originally thought because of their donations which they're willing to make that site's going to have to be cleared at some point anyway so i think uh, for a minimal investment here, we get the site cleared up, we get it clean, uh, get it ready to go and uh, get that behind us. And then we can move on to these next two phases and uh, the pickleball clubs working hard. We've met with a number of foundations. We're going to take a smaller bite approach rather than trying to get the whole thing done at once, uh, you know, ask for smaller amounts of money and uh, are fairly confident that we'll be able to to get the whole project completed within the next 12 to 18 months. But of course that will be dependent on how we come out on those smaller grant applications. But worst case scenario, the town has a nice parking lot there for uh, the next uh, 12 months for the tennis players and baseball uh, enthusiasts to, to use. We get rid of all those nasty, huge boulders that are there that uh, are gonna have to be moved someday anyway. I'm glad to answer any questions anyone might have. Trustees. The only comment that I've got is phase two and three are some pretty big, there's a lot of zeros there. Um, so I, I just, I'm, I'm not fearful, but the expectations that the town is gonna have money to commit to the next two phases is um, questionable. So I, 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 I support it, I think it's great. I just don't know. There's just we're, we're just on the incline of the, the, the effort. So uh, yeah, on that note, uh, Trustee Volpe, we feel that the site preparation will really increase the excitement um, from the community and the county, but also increase uh, you know people's willingness to donate. You know, Peak to Peak's been great. Um, they've raised a very large amount of money, about forty thousand dollars. They're going to contribute. 10 to this first phase. So they'll have more for the next couple of phases, but also um, we'll be able to, to raise some additional funds we feel. And um, we just, in general, are a, a little gun shy of these very, very large grants that have huge numbers on them. 
So we feel like um, you know, $120,000 is more obtainable than the large ask all at once for 300,000. And um, just finally, it was in our report as well as uh, the Rec Advisory Board is very excited about this approach because we've been talking about it for about five years and we want to just take a step forward and, and get, some, um, get some progression going here. Thank you, Earl. Dave, any other questions, comments? I just think the pickleball community has been very patient. You know, they've got to wade through the Sunset Vista Park twice. And, um, I'd like to see it go forward with this. I agree with, with Volpe, though, that that's, those are big dollars in the future. But as, and, and I'll agree with Earl, as it says, we're taking a little cut. The ask isn't near as much. Uh, and, and, and it sounds like well, no different than it always has been, and it's going to, I think it's going to remain that way, Earl, is uh, everybody's asking. Everybody's got a handout. So the, the more opportunity we can take to move forward. And right now we have a group that's willing to help move forward, and that, that makes a big difference, big difference. Any other comments, trustees? Yeah, you think that'll help with a future GOCO grant for that? Uh, Pickleball court, or is it I, once we start this, are we? I think give it yeah, up? that's a great question, um, Trustee Rowe. I think from our experience, uh, what we saw with the high school uh, baseball field is the town uh, stepped up and put in a substantial amount of funding to get it actually built to a certain level, right. and then GoCo awarded the finishing portion of it. So I don't think it will detract from our right. potential to get. Uh, future funding. I don't know, Earl, if you have any other thoughts on that, but it's a, re it's a really good question that we've, we've pondered, but I think we're okay. Yeah, absolutely. So GoCo loves to see their number one um, key factor is community involvement. So we all write it down on paper when we're doing grant applications, but this is just an example. We can show them, well, we've done phase one with the peak to peak pickleball club in the county and the town and all these volunteer groups helping to make it happen. So it's, you will have shown that, you know, community is, is what we use as an approach to get things done. I think it'll, it'll help bolster applications in the future. Yeah. I love the, uh, editor, if I could, uh, we're, we're definitely uh, wanting to pursue GOCO in conjunction with the town but we're also uh, wanting to pursue other sources, uh, both from our donor base, of which we feel like this will raise excitement, awareness, uh, and generate more contributions and pledges from, from our pickleball community. Uh, but also Jennifer Eagleston, our president of our pickleball club, uh, met just within the last few weeks with five different foundations, including the Daniels Fund, El Palmar, and the Gates Foundation, and there were two others. Uh, and our read on them is they're looking to fund more smaller projects. So uh, we have our next meeting on May the 6th, and we're going to be discussing how to vigorously pursue all sources, both from our members, uh, GOCO, and uh, uh, these other foundations and funding sources. Thank you, uh, board. I would entertain a motion to utilize the funds that are currently there uh, to put a portion of that into the phase one site preparation or not. I move uh, to keep the 20,000 of CTF funds in the budget and redirect 10K of this budget line to support phase one of the new pickleball facility. Thank you, Amy. I'll second. Thank you, Cindy. Further discussion? Roll call vote. Trustee Eckstein? Yes. Trustee Finney? Yes. Trustee Rowe? Yes. Trustee Swisher? Yes. Trustee Volpe? Yes. Thank you very much. And thank you guys. Keep at it, Earl. Okay. Thank you all very much. Really appreciate thank it. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Next item on the agenda is the Farm Subdivision Phase Two Public Improvement Agreement. Should the Board of Trustees approve adoption of Resolution Number Twenty Four, Series Twenty Twenty One, a resolution 
of the Board of Trustees for the Town of Buena Vista, Colorado, approving a public improvement agreement with Wayfarer Development LLC for the property known as the Farm Subdivision, filing number one, amendment number three, Buena Vista, Colorado. All right, Mark. All right, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. All right, what we have before you is a resolution authorizing approval of a public improvements agreement for the public improvements that the town will maintain after they're constructed, inspected, and accepted by the town. Namely, we're looking at streets. Um, this is a continuation of the farm streets that are in there. So windmill, uh, uh, excuse me, weather vane lane, barnwood drive, um, there will be a new street windmill lane, as well as some alleys and some water lines and some sidewalks. Additionally, they will be constructing a portion of the rights of way for the current Antero Circle that is right of way that was dedicated with the development of the condominiums to the uh, east of the farm. So there's some missing infrastructure that they are going to be installing to connect to that road. So this agreement is the contract between the developer and the um, mechanism is a letter of credit that should the developer um, walk away from the project, the town has the ability to collect on that letter of credit to install those public improvements. Any questions? Trustees. I would entertain a motion. As you can see, there is no budget impact. I would entertain a motion to approve, approve with amendments, conditions, or deny. I have a motion to approve resolution number 24, series 2021. Thank you very much. I'll second that. Second Faye. Further discussion? Roll call vote. Trustee Eckstein? Yes. Trustee Faye? Yes. Trustee Rowe? Yes. Trustee Swisher? Yes. Yes. Thank you all very much and thank you, Mark. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the first quarter 2021 financial report. Thank you, Mayor, trustees. Gosh, I was kind of thinking that the farm thing was going to go a lot longer than it did. So uh, um, my report is on page 41 of the packet. Um, sales tax continues to come in strong. Um, we have gotten January and February of 2021. And the uh, surplus on that do I have it written down in here is $126,000? Yeah. And um, we're 43% over 2020 February. And 2020 February, if you look at the chart on what page was that? Three. 43, you can see that the that February of 2020 had a correction of 116,000, just to remind you, this was a correction uh, because the state of Colorado had not been remitting um, an account to us. And so that is a three year uh, summation of what was due us from that particular account. And so the actual, without the correction for 2020 was 212 and to go, 000, and to go from 212,000 to 305,000 is a pretty big step. Philip and I were talking about what we felt this was attributable to and probably a large portion of that, not all of it, would be because of the factory in the Colorado Center is paying use taxes and remote sales tax because of the equipment and the 
um, steel and other uh, building and construction materials that are being brought on site for that. So there is additional, there is additional um, activity in the town. And so it's already starting to pick up, but uh, probably the factory, Legree's and and just that our shoulder seasons are not as soft anymore. So um, hang on because the summertime is going to be crazy. The next chart is the balance sheet of all the funds. Um, it's unaudited, uh, meaning that the the beginning that the fund balance amounts are not yet uh, solidified because the audit is still ongoing. Um, total assets are $16.8 million. Um, and that has the fixed assets added to them. So um, keep that in mind as far as the fund balances. The next sheet is on 45 is the 2021 fund balances. So as projected through March of, of uh, this year. So this, this particular chart is taking into account only activity that has happened so far in the year. And at at uh, 331, the general fund has $1.3 million in unrestricted fund balance. Um, I got into color coding. And the next chart is a projected through the end of the year for 2021. And that is showing $1.1 million in unrestricted fund balance. So it's staying pretty steady. As far as this particular chart, I took the budget and added um, additional expenses. For instance, the dry gulch ditch purchased out of the water fund is, is um, accounted for in the expenses of the water fund. On this chart, um, the additional sales tax revenue is accounted for and there were some other puts and takes that I added to the budget portion of this to come up with the 1231 so I do believe it's a pretty pretty fair representation at this point of course it it doesn't ever stay the same so this is just a pretty good guess um, the next chart is just showing the activity for the bonds. Um, there is a, a pretty good change in market value as far as because the bond the bond market is soft at this point. So because we're required to book market value change, it's not a recognized change, but it it's not a realized change, but it, we do have to recognize it on the books. And so it's about $26,000, $27,000 um, decrease in market value. And that's simply because of how soft the bond market is and how low the um, treasury rates are right now. We did have a bond get called um it will be called as of the end of this month and i've already arranged to replace it with a bond that has um a better interest rate but no interest rates are good right now they're just they're just not the the stock market is going crazy and so also the fed is keeping interest rates low 
and that's keeping bond yields low. So, um, but we're doing the best we can, and it is still, we're still on, on the plus side as far as uh, how we've done as the, with, the, with the bond investments. The next um, gazillion pages is the budget to actual report um, for every, every account that we track budget on. Um, and we're, I mean, it's so early in the year, obviously we're well within budget in all of the accounts. So um, I will be willing to take questions at this point. Thank you, Michelle. Trustees? I just really tried to find something wrong with that sales tax, but <laughs> you're right. I know. <laughs> I agree with your 43%. So I, you're Go ahead, Michelle. I, I did too. I, I'm like, oh, wait, no, I can't say that. That can't possibly be right. And so I tore it apart pretty carefully myself, but and and Philip looked at it, so we've kind of passed it around, going scratching our heads, going, "Wow, this is kind of scary." There's well, no if, if Philip looked at it, it's got to be right. <laughs> There's no way exactly. to dig into that any deeper and find out. Uh, I, I think the suspicion is we, that the fact is it's not a suspicion. Uh, the the numbers are there for for the materials and the cranes and things like that for the factory. <laughs> Line of thought is I'd, I'd like to I, be data driven, make data driven decisions. If if trying to build a factory and then you know, those opportunities are rare, but um, or trail investment or, or any 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 infrastructure investment where our return on, on dollars is, and this is obviously you know we we kind of lucked into it, but <coughs> it's certainly helping things out. Mm -hmm. It's interesting in the yeah the impact that that has. Mm -hmm. I would have never guessed. Mm -hmm. So just going to wave the police station flag. That's going to be about $4 million at some point. I'm wondering if the board would consider a staff. Is it worthwhile to earmark part of this surplus for facilities? And Because we're looking for the police station. Say that again. So for 120000 130000 surplus, is it worthwhile to make hundred thousand? We won't spend. It will go towards facilities. Is there a value in doing that to keep to for discipline? Or you know, you guys don't have to answer now. It's just something if you guys want to think about it, and if we could talk about it another to time. Sort of earmark part of that money, or or that, but not necessarily for a part of that, like for architectural drawings or. Well, it's like five hundred thousand. We need that's part of the budget capital improvement plan is like 500,000 will probably come from our unrestricted budget. It's just just something that I thought about is for the cost. Does the Two things that you probably ought to take into account is that we will be bringing forth a plan to finance, um, to finance the police department. We'll be bringing forth a plan to um, to find a buyer for the fire station and the town hall. And um, we will also be starting to collect marijuana uh, tax in the marijuana fund. And that's, a, that's budgeted at 125,000 also. So I think Q3, there's a work session on the police station. It's just mm -hmm. I'm just so curious about the funding with the police station. So mm -hmm. that's just one thought I had. But well, we could keep watching that that surplus too and see if it see if it holds up. And, but then it's not a bad idea. And budget amendments coming. Yes. Let us see how much is left after that. Saying mm -hmm. we're already committed to more outside the budget, and we aren't done yet with possibly more uh -huh. in the meeting. So there's always more, there's always more. Thank you, Michelle. Are there any questions, other questions for Michelle? You know, you could, I'm not gonna commit here, but if you could do another 40% next month, <laughs> you could get a raise maybe. 
<laughs> Thank you very much, Michelle. You're welcome. Next item on the agenda is the airport lot sale proposal. Jack, I believe you're running with this one. Yes, good evening, Mr. Mayor, trustees. Um, so the town was approached by David Harmon. Uh, he wanted to inquire if he can buy a, uh, a lot to the very south end of our runway or our airfield that happens to be lot number 10. Now, if you look on page 74, I have a PowerPoint there. You can see on the top slide, it has the land that we acquired in 2017. And then the bottom slide, you see a little box. That's the land he's interested in, lot number 10. Now, David, he owns uh, lot 11 next to us, and he also owns the Air Park RV storage, and he just wants to expand. So this is why he, he's looking to purchase that particular lot. Now, the little bit of a tricky part we have here, uh, refer you back to the top slide, that whole yellow box we purchased in 2017 with FAA grant funded money. And <clears throat> they basically paid 90% of that. So I think the total cost back then was 491,000 for that entire yellow box to include the hanger that sort of the box cuts through. So the reason I bring that up with, once we take money from the FAA, uh, we're, we're sort of on the hook for life when it comes to uh, land purchase. Doesn't mean we can't sell it. It just means if we do, we have to follow FAA regulations on and procedures. And one of the main things about that, if we sold the land, that particular funding would have to go back to the airport uh, to be used as airport funded money. Uh, right now, I've talked to our FAA rep, Ron Niehoff. He is looking into it. He's kicked this request up to their headquarters. So I'm just waiting for their final approval. I don't see a problem with it. I think, I, I believe they're gonna approve it if we, so choose to go forward with it. Like I say, it just means that that money would have to stay within the airport uh, funded money. Um, other than that, uh, I don't know if you, if you have any questions, I can certainly entertain that. And, and Jack, do you, uh, you discuss this with the airport advisory board? Yes, and that, yeah, correct, sorry. Uh, and they're on board with that too. So basically it, it's just money, extra money we get if we sold it that we could certainly use at the airport for projects, fence, like moving the fence line, cleaning the tanks that you can see behind me, uh, stuff like that. So do you have an offer on the table? Yeah. No, he hasn't made an offer yet. So, cause I hadn't, I didn't want to pursue too far. I have his letter of intent. Um, and I guess the other, Thing is, we have to, once we get it appraised, it has to be a fair market value. It's, it's something we can't, whatever the fair market value and whatever the FAA approves. So I haven't pursued too far until I actually get that go ahead with FAA. And of course, the go ahead with you folks. Other questions? This is an affecting our the through the fence operation. I'm not even sure what I have a vague idea what that concept means, but I know that that's something we've been trying to phase out. And this this isn't expanding that at all. No, actually, it kind of would help us. It's less fence lane that I have to fence off. Okay. So it uh, definitely will not affect through the fence. He will have okay. no rights to that because we have that, and we we wouldn't be selling the through the fence option. Okay. Other questions? Um, I would entertain a motion to, to have Jack continue or to drop the process. Knowing that the airport board and Jack are in support of this, I would make a motion to let them continue. Thank you. I'll second that. I've got a second row. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Eckstein? Yes. Trustee Fay? Yes. Trustee Rowe? Yes. Trustee Swisher? Oh, she's muted. She said something, but that's okay. Yes. <laughs> she said yes. Trustee Hubble? <laughs> yes. She said yes. 
<laughs> yeah, she, she, we, she needs to get sign language down. <laughs> Yo, I'm here. Thank you all very much. And thank you, Jack. Okay, thank you very much. Keep us posted. Uh, staff reports, uh, town treasurer. Thank you, Mayor and Trustees. Um, my report is on page 75 of the packet. That's what it works out to. Yep. And um, since I covered everything fun uh, in my first quarter report, I have the transparency website URL and I have the 21 budget URL up there and the town uh, statistics as far as the AP packets go and expenditures over $2,000. Any questions? Any questions, anybody? I don't think Cindy actually put as much time into the water deal as she said. Her bill isn't that high. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. This is March. Just oh, yeah. say it. This is March. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Mark Doring, Principal Planner. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on page 77 is the start of my staff report. Uh, we continue to see a pretty good amount of construction. We've had three new building permits for residential this month, but um, I will say we've had a ton of inquiries. So um, we continue to have a lot of conversations with people about plans that they would like to do. And um, we are starting to stack up on just those meetings. I'm now about two weeks out just to have a conversation with people on their plans. So item number three on that, on that sheet, uh, we have had some conversations with some properties on East Main Street. We have had uh, continued conversations about the 15 acres southeast of the high school. Um, there's also a half acre parcel on the north side of Marquette. We've had some conversations about uh, the next one is actually Vista Court Cabins, not Sunset Vista Cabins. Um, there's some possible conversations about uh, development of that site. Uh, we've had some conversations about our drone park, Boys and Girls Club, and Arkansas and Colorado. And um, Philip and I had a conversation today with two more projects that potentially on East Main Street. So we are starting to see a lot of development potential coming our way. Um, I fear that these might all hit at the same time, so we'll see how we do. Um, we did receive a site plan, uh, basically an amendment to a site plan for Love's Gas Station. They are looking to add additional restrooms to that facility, and that's something we'll have to take a look at, is particularly as it relates to our water uh, infrastructure on that site. Um, additionally, um, we've had a conversation with our planning commission about starting hybrid meetings in May and um, having some, some conversations about that. Um, so we hope to be moving forward in May meeting in person. Historic preservation also has a lot of things on its agenda. They are looking to have another commissioner um, to round out their staff, they're looking at a uh, person who worked for History Colorado, who happens to live in the area. So we'll see how that goes next week. Um, additionally, um, they're continuing their efforts on landmarking and the historic survey of residential properties in the downtown area. And we did receive an application for landmarking the Buena Vista Heritage Museum with the local landmark status. So we will probably hear that in June. Um, and then they have continued to express interest in getting local landmarks of other structures in town. Um, with that, I will say we've been working on a lot of subdivisions. We, the farm you saw a little bit tonight, we'll be working on finishing that up. We're working on a Sixth Amendment to South Maine's Phase 1, River Run at BV up on Arkansas, um, one on Block 30, one on Block 34. We finished the subdivision for the summit, which is going to house um, the Crave and some 
um, short-term rentals in a hotel on that site that used to be gone to the dogs. Um, we do have an application that has been submitted for some short-term rentals on Main Street, and we hope to see that going to the Planning and Zoning Commission soon. Um, additionally, we've been working on a few other things. Um, there's another revitalizing Main Street grant that potentially we'll be working on, continuing to get those alley improvements done in Block 21, particularly as it relates to utilities. Um, the Crossman's Edition water model, I don't want to rehash that hour of your life that we took last time. Um, we have an amendment going to the water dedication ordinance, Chafee Housing and Health Series. We've been doing some things with them. Um, and then in the last week, the Colorado Water Conservation Board had a meeting to kick off their remapping of waters in Chafee County. So we will probably see an effort to change the existing floodplain map um, that we have that was adopted in 2017. Uh, they are potentially going to be remapping that with 2D uh, mapping. If you, those of you who were around for that, there were some conversations about the existing technology of 1D mapping versus 2D mapping. It does look like that they will be doing some 2D mapping and doing some LIDAR analysis and probably trying to get to a final map in 2024. So just in the beginning stages of that. Um, we are also looking at getting some GIS field data collection equipment to begin to do some mapping in the field, things like fire hydrants, street lights, curb valves, those kind of things that we can actually put into our GIS system. Um, and then we do have a couple of administrative adjustments that we've worked on. One is regarding parking space width and one is for fence height. And with that, I'll shut up and ask if you have any questions. Questions for Mark. Hmm. You mentioned short-term rentals on East Main Street. I assume that's, I think that's by special use permit. Does that get approved by planning and zoning or does it come here? It, in the code, a special use permit is um, reviewed by the Planning and Zoning Commission. So that Thank is you. going to the Planning and Zoning Commission. They are looking to get an answer on that before they come in for a site plan that would potentially go back to the Planning and Zoning Commission um, or be handled administratively by staff, depending upon the size and, and numbers. But the, the board does have in our code the ability to call up certain items and um, we can certainly have that conversation later as the applications come in for site plans. Any other questions? Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Have a good night. Sean. Hey, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, trustees. My report is on page 79, 79 in the packet. Um, and as always for a starter, the uh, water production comparison graphs there. So um, 2019, 2020, and 21. You'd think we were going the wrong way with our development, but you know, this is a uh, it's a marathon and not a sprint, but you know, maybe some of our leak detection and efforts in our system are helping. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll look at it in, uh, in December and, and have a better idea for it. A um, couple of things going on. Uh, Joe is handling his uh, compliance sampling. We, we call it sample getting. Um, he's doing pretty good with that. We have a lot of sampling going on in 2021. And he's staying on top of that. Um, we have a lot of uh, uh, grinding out with the Woody compliance sampling for, for Well 3. And, and that's going to be um, something that probably continues um, for the next couple quarters for sure for Joe. Just needs to make time to do that. And he's doing really good with it. We have a couple dates set up with JVA in May on May 12th. 
and May 3rd um, to get the um, kind of a, an action plan and the pilot study uh, kicked off for the water plant expansion project. The um, maybe a record setting year for meter installations first quarter 24, maybe, maybe not. Seems like a pretty high number to me, but we did have a lot of backlog service lines waiting to just get um, the meters put on them. Um, interesting number though. Um, Um, Joel and, and Mark and myself, we had a kickoff meeting with Wright Water Engineers. Um, they came to BV um, last week and we sat down and we, we discussed a uh, table of contents for the water uh, resource master plan. Um, pretty good scope, give us a pretty good idea of what we're, what we're looking at. They had a lot of questions um, for, for all three of us and you know, have some action items to provide them as we start moving towards that. Um, looking to give them some updated system maps. Um, of course, the water plant expansion project um, scope and design when it comes, the SFE tracking spreadsheets um, and annual and monthly reports. Um, the uh, farm track J summary evaluation is also in this report. And, um, you know, ultimately um, it's a summarized version of the report that I got from Wright Water, and it kind of captures just about everything that that I conveyed at the last meeting, but with a little bit more detail. Um, and so a little bit of background um, with board approval, the town uh, engaged with Wright Water to look at the feasibility for engineering service to uh, to design a new well um, at the farm subdivision. Um, when the farm was platted, the parcel of land um, track J was dedicated to the town for a future well site. And, you know, recently with the phase two development coming our way, um, uh, we decided to get those guys in there to kind of determine, you know, what it would be, what we need and how we could do it. And, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing more enlightening than what I shared with you guys last month, you know, just kind of identify the constraints a little bit and um, and kind of share with you, you know, their analysis of the site. And, and, and again, kind of going back to the alternative location, um, you know, with the factors that Wright Water identified, you know, they, they appear to uh, uh, recommend an alternate site for well four. And uh, the, the recommendation is that we uh, consider the River Park Pavilion side River Park in general, uh, where we control, you know, a lot more land and we have uh, existing infrastructure with the well three um, investment that we made down there. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I can share the full report with you all if you'd like to see it. Um, ultimately, we're, we're not going to stop. Um, the discussions with right water on this, but we need a little bit of breathing room to focus on um, getting the water plant expansion project up, but we plan on having some um, review opportunities with those guys um, and continue meeting with them uh, for that location for for a future, you know, maybe expansion or another well site down there. Um, I dropped in a couple um, snips from the plan sets just to kind of show you just in case you didn't know where track J was, um, that first page from the plan set shows that track J is that little triangle portion and it's off to the east side of that uh, development site. And then that next um, page from uh, plan set kind of shows the site itself and, and, and a little bit of the constraints involved where you have this kind of switchback line that goes back and forth um, from that square kind of building location there. And it shows you the, the piping that it's, it's taking to get that put in there in that, uh, in that small area. Um, and, and that's really a doable thing. It's just um, um, not, you know, not as desirable, desirable as, it, as, it, as it should be. Um, anyways, um, we'll keep, uh, try to give you some better news next time we talk about Well3. Um, yeah, streets, yeah, believe it or not, we, we are 
fixing potholes. We uh, have a lot. Of, <laughs> well, we're, we're working on it. We, I don't know if there's a shortage of asphalt coal mix in, in the nation, but uh, we, we've been waiting patiently for, for months to get uh, some deliveries and looks like they came today just in time for, for asphalt season. So we'll, we'll keep working on that. And, and yeah, we'll just keep plugging away, working on cleaning up town, getting on the highway and getting on Main Street. And um, yeah, we got a lot of cleanup to do. There's a lot of uh, sidewalks that need swept and there's a lot of streets that need swept. Um, Parks Department is pretty much trying to turn irrigation systems on now that we're back into winter. Um, seems to be going pretty good, um, but uh, River Parks, on and ready to go. And most of our parks are on and ready to go as well. We'll just kind of bide our time with this little bit of winter weather that we're, we're experiencing again. A um, Couple big thank yous. Thank you to all the volunteers. Um, uh, Bless BB team. They did a great job for us this weekend. Earl and, and what he does and the cleanup weekend that, that we got to uh, um, kind of reap the benefits of this weekend as well. Um, amazing, we got an amazing community here with a lot of, a lot of great volunteers and it, it really does make a difference. And another big thanks to Six Lines for, for an amazing job and in, in the gateway signs. A couple, couple dates to, to put on your calendar, Arbor Day, May 19th, um, our Railroad Street Sidewalk Project location. Um, and then the Town of Buena Vista cleanup days, May 21st and May 22nd. And uh, that, uh, those flowers will be on the website as well. That's all I got. Thanks. Uh, Questions for Sean? It's just, just a comment, it's just 300,000 gallons a month. It's a lot. And is there like a sea note out there or like a secret lake that we don't know about? Like 300,000 gallons in one month to Ivy League is just, it's just, it's just crazy. It's better than it has been, but yeah, I don't know. It just always well, bothered me seeing those numbers. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's a tough one. We're, uh, you know, we had a little bit of a hiccup. We had we have some really um, valuable leak detection correlating equipment, and right in the middle of that project, we had some battery failures, and um, so we had to shut that down. And we're waiting for our pods with new batteries to come back, and and we're going to jump back on a couple other legs out there. You know, being time cost effective, all right, and being sensitive to the fact that. You know, we, we work for, you know, the taxpayers for the town of Buena Vista. But I think with, um, you know, a thoughtful approach and, and, and trying to be effective and, and efficient, you know, we can, we can spend a little bit more time to see what we can find. But ultimately, you know, my recommendation to, to Ivy League is going to be to outsource a consultant to go and to do a thorough leak detection to see what they can find. Hopefully they can find it. It's 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 really hard to find leaking water in our soils here. Um, it's uh, that granite granola, you know. It just it just kind of gets into the ground and wants to stay there, and um, it's, they're just hard to find. But yeah, I agree. Um, it's it's a lot of water. Go ahead, there. Um, Sean, thanks for the great description of the issues with regard to well number four. That was really yeah. very readable and a good summary. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Sean. Next item, airport manager. Uh, good evening again, Mr. Mayor and trustees. A um, bit of a short report. Um, I'll I had a meeting with Philip and I should have led with this at the beginning. So I'm going to lead this before I forget. Uh, Leonardo did finally pay us from their 2019 operations. You can see the numbers there, $153,000. So we've got some money in the bank now that we can do some uh, work at here at the airport. Um, last week, 21st, we had the UAS TP County uh, roundup. It's a drone roundup. A lot of interesting stuff going to come out. The FAs. 
looking at revising some of the drone regulations and we'll keep uh, the town and uh, the trustees ab uh, abreast of the changes of that. Um, and then I've, I've already mentioned lot number 10 sales, equipment's doing good and um, operation wise, we're, we're, we're doing well. Uh, you know, we're getting as much traffic, more traffic than we did last year. Uh, if you look at fuel sales, 100 low lead is up. We didn't get as much Jet A sales last year. Uh, we just didn't have as much March break traffic as we did. I don't know if it was COVID thing, but we were getting some pretty nasty weather. So I just we just weren't getting the traffic. So we're down a little bit of Jet A sale, but traffic is up, operations up. So it's a good indicator for um, um, a good summer. Item last, if you look on page 84, you can see a report. We had a young lad crash through our fence on the south end. Um, I'm getting the police report, so we'll it's we'll go through the insurance. Um, unfortunately, a young fellow is going to have to end up paying for that. But uh, you can see the uh, where that happened, right on 320 County Road 320, right at the very south end. Not entirely sure how he pulled it off. He went over the fence, <laughs> through it, and then drove right out through the south end of it. And, uh, a lot of parts and pieces down there, uh, but he's okay. Everybody's okay. And we had the state trooper had him in the car when I went down and saw what happened. So state trooper pickle was there. And so we'll get it resolved. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll happily entertain. Thank you, Jack. Any questions for Jack? Comments? This work on the 150 K. Yeah, it was a long time coming. I got to I gotta learn how to speak Italian, I guess. Uh, thank Any you. other comments? Thank you all very much. Trustee staff interaction. Uh, first would be Odyssey of the Mind. Go for a match. You would say whatever they can raise, we would match up to? I think seven, I mean, well... They need seven thousand. So yep, and they currently said they had. They thought they had a couple at this point. A couple yeah. thousand. Yep. So we'd match up to thirty-five hundred, or would you go further than that? Oh, they might. I don't know. I just you know they're needing a total of seven, and if they get thirty-five, we'd match thirty-five. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Okay. Other comments. So that leaves them with another fifteen hundred to raise. Well, they, I think they have a thousand. They, they think they can rent enough. They can get another thousand. So that would be 2,000. But it might just motivate people. You know, the town's matching it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think. Uh, is there an expectation? Do you guys usually just get the phone call? <clears throat> yeah, I think they said they had a couple thousand. So mm -hmm. they got like 15 to get somewhere. Something to that effect. Mm -hmm. you guys Thoughts, to do something? Comments, motion. I wonder if they could put on any kind of a performance of what they do for the town. You don't have an event in the park or something where they demonstrate what they do, raise money. Like bridges and little projects and things. Maybe it's maybe been around since I was in school. Yeah, I think it's a great program. And, you know, um, school athletics gets a lot of support. Right. So it's nice, that, um, you know, nice that they're so enthusiastic about the uh, academic. Mm -hmm. You guys said you guys given money in the past. Is it going to see? Yeah, yes. we've done. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty regular. Would you? Do you guys usually do something similar to that? Or? Yeah, the match concept we've done a couple of times in the past. Mm -hmm. Try to encourage other groups to participate, and it, and it keeps them working too. Okay. You know, to try to get more money instead of just sit back and go, "All right, we got it, we're done." Yeah. Kind of thing. So, anyway, the entertainment motion to either match. Whatever. What do you think, David? Uh, I, I realize this is a weird year, so I can forgive the mid-year ask, but we've set up funding for these projects through the Shady County Community Foundation. And I, I, if we, I, I, I realize it's a one-off, it's a one-year, one is an odd year, so I, I'm, I'm not vehemently opposed to it, but we do have other avenues that we have 
set up so that this doesn't happen. Well, it sounds like it's because they, they won. won. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they may not have known about this. They didn't know. It sounds like they won the spot in the finals. That's yeah. typically how it works. Yeah. That's, you know, and that's the only uh, uh, excuse I would give them is because they never, I don't think they know from year to year whether they're going to make it or not. I'm good for you know, that. So, you know, this country, if it's going to be an ongoing thing, or I, I just, I, I mean, that's something we could address them with. Let's say, um, uh, maybe we could make that commitment to say we would give it matching funds up to $3,500 and say, hey, by the way, you know, if you think this is something ongoing, put in for it. Or, or there again, we can look at budget line item too. Mm -hmm. and so, I mean, it's not a big dent. Would you want to put like as part of the budget, maybe like several thousand or just I, I, don't, I, don't, I mean it's it's a one off so I'm not I don't want to make an issue out of it. Yes. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just a comment. Yeah. Just a comment. And I don't disagree. Yeah. Because they're here pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. And like you say, this year's weird year. They did I think they did miss two years. The board could always make it a line item to say, you know, as a matching amount. Um, so five ends as an account for 2022, something that's more predictable, but maybe is more in line with their timing. Cause we do that with like BV strong. We set aside 3000 it just in case. And so far they haven't ever come and used that, but we set it aside anyway, every year. So could do that just so it's more predictable. It's not, it doesn't feel like a one-off. We could, we could, we could approach it that way. Do you get more things than just this oddest? Like, is it going to be next something else? Or like, I'm... It, it used to be all the time that you know, they would come up with it. Not an odyssey, but I mean, just... It's it's part of yeah, it doesn't happen much anymore. Because it's all moved to a process. Yeah. yeah. It, it, he waivers forever. And yep. <laughs> Would you like to make a motion? Sure. Uh, I'd make a motion to match... Uh, the high school Odyssey team's fundraising efforts up to $3,500. Second that. Second fate. Further discussion. Um, maybe we can talk about more budget time. Okay. About adding something into a line item and maybe we could group it into a extracurricular, extracurricular funding for $3,000 or something like that. That sounds like a Jeopardy question. Then. <laughs> um, roll call, please. Trustee Eckstein? Yes. Trustee Fay? Yes. Trustee Rowe? Yes. Trustee Swisher? Yes. Trustee Volpe? No. Thank you all very much. Um, Michelle, you're first. Is she still here? I'm sorry. I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're taking notes. I, yeah, for a budget adjustment up to $3,500. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I talked myself silly with my report. Thank you very much. Mark, do you have anything else? Nothing at this time. Thank you very much. Jack, do you have anything else to add? No, nothing at this time. Have a good evening, folks. Thank you, Jack. You too, Earl. Nope. You guys have a great night. Thanks for everything. Thanks, Earl. Joel, would you like to add anything? No, everyone else stole my thunder. So it's perfect. perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Paula, if we could hear you, you could sign in for us or something. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, oh. gotcha. All right. Couple of things. First of all, I owe so much gratitude to Lillian and Philip. Thank you. The team at Town Hall have been awesome, as well as throughout the town. And earlier in the meeting, you guys talked about an adventure going to Moab and things. <laughs> I challenge you to a 48 hour adventure of not using your dominant hand. <laughs> that means from if you're using the keyboard, use your left hand. If you're brushing your teeth, use your left hand. If you're cutting your food, use your left hand. Not to mention showering. So 
But yeah, it's been an awesome experience. This all rolls back to a snowmobile experience a year ago in March that I finally got taken care of. You know, COVID hit and a little bit different things. So yeah, thank you for the experience. Once again, Lillian, indebted to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Paula. Uh, Sean, anything to add? Oh, thank you all. All righty, Amy. So wanted to revisit the, we're talking about fire mitigation, um, Cottonwood Creek fire management around that. Is that at some point, can we ask Envision or Common Grounds um, to help mitigate that um, just to protect our water supply? Maybe money we can put up as a match? Um, like they said grant cycle, I didn't know if that. Yeah, is. so I think when they came and, and made the proposal for the, for the mitigation up north that they would prioritize that for the next round. So we could ask them when they have that ready for, for submission, they could come back and share an update. And maybe a budget line. It seems like the fire stuff keeps yeah. adding in, but that's something I yep. I'd be very interested in. Okay. Because we did request that they added that. Yep. We made it very clear that that's where we wanted to see the next activity. That's right. So at that point in time in that meeting, we did. Uh, okay. We did Thank you. That's it. Okay. Dave? I got nothing. Cindy? I just wanted to say it was good to hear Paula's voice and see her back in somewhat action. Glad she's doing well. That's it. Thank you, Cindy. Devin? I just wanted to remind everybody that it, that COVID is still here and that um, to support our service industry folk, it's, it's still a hard time. Masks are still required and just to keep, uh, keep following through with what the county, county health uh, recommends. So support all our service industry folk in this town. It's still hard. Great. Thank you, Devin. Uh, Libby. Um, I went to the high school musical and I was just so impressed with, you know, with the young people and uh, Dave Volpe's daughter is the star of the show. And she bought the old block. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you saying, like, she could sing. She did a great job. And Chloe was in it too, right? She so was. It's, it's a marvelous facility. And then the kids just did an excellent job. They have a good director and good support from the community. Uh, it's, it's a good time. Uh, it's amazing what a small community is. Mm -hmm. That's what I can say. There are some it's proud people. proud papas in there. I, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. able to name names in a community after an event like that. That's that's an ordeal right there. Yeah. Just to be able to go, wow, I know that. Yeah, and that's cool. Did you get anything else? That's it. That's good. Good. That was enough. I don't think we have any more. Oh, wait a minute. We got, wait a minute. Philip? I've, I've got you for exact session. So we'll. Okay. Billion? <laughs> nope, I'm good. You're all good. Okay. So um, actually, that was a very nice comment. Very nice. I tried to be nice. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're, my kid wasn't in it, so I didn't have to worry. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a musical. <laughs> was there. Oh, God. Uh, next item on the agenda is executive session is an executive session to determine positions relative to matters that may be subject to negotiations, develop a strategy strategy for negotiations and or instruct negotiators pursuant to CRS 24-6-402, paragraph four, subparagraph E concerning the potential service agreement with Chafee County Fire Protection District. I would entertain a motion. Second. Second. Second row. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. Um, we will go into executive session. Who do we have coming today, Philip? Just myself and Jeff. Okay. Wow, Joe hung around just to be here. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Bye.